Fresh Kills, for me, was an incredible uh, sort of moment of a hidden history in this country that very few people witnessed. That was a very quiet side to, to what was just an enormous piece of American history. It was this crime scene in the backyard that no one knew about. After the Trade Center collapse, it was evident that the rescue workers would not be able to recover all the human remains at the site, given the complex activity at the World Trade Center. So they decided they needed an off-site location to do this. They considered two sites. Floyd Bennett Field was one. Right away, they decided that it would be fresh kills, and they reopened 175 of the 2,200 acres. In the beginning, there were people that wanted the name of the landfill changed. They thought it was a morbid thing, but a kill, kill is Dutch for a river, and so the name was kept. Many of the objects were just from everyday life and very sort of neutral objects that couldn't be identified with a person. You'd see stuffed dolls. These were souvenirs from the gift shops. Uh, an odd thing, one day we saw a cigar store Indian, a, um, a life-size carved Indian. It was very um, demolished but recognizable. We saw pieces of Rodin bronze. It was interesting, when they found the Rodin bronzes, they found a, a torso bronze with the head and feet cut off, and right away they thought they had found human remains, and it was turned out to be a bronze. Piece. We saw lampposts. One day we were there and there was a, um, this enormous pile of lampposts from one of the, the surrounding streets and uh, fire hydrants that had come over. So the, the material would come over every day in a barge depending on where they were cleaning up downtown. So they knew at Fresh Kills if this was from very deep or from some part of the Trade Center. So sometimes they could sort of expect what they were finding or what they were going to find. The smallest sort of things we would see, they'd find keys, and they saved any key that was marked the World Trade Center. Uh, and I think they saved, we probably saw about 200 or so keys. Another sort of things that we would see is elevator signs, little, little sign markers that mark floors of an elevator. They found 25 or 30 of these, which we were thrilled to see. When you think there was 99 elevators in each building and 110 floors, and they only found 25 of these little three-inch signs. It wasn't very much. We were surprised when we got there, and it felt like a construction site. There was no one in uniform there. You didn't know who was who. The FBI agents were dressed like the sanitation workers, and everybody was moving around with this, this uh, loud sound of bulldozers and backhoes and, and beeping. And at first, when I saw it, I thought they were moving mounds, mounds of dirt around with, with loaders. Um, and what we were seeing is, was the ground remains of uh, the World Trade Center. And it had a very organized sense to it. The material came in in these buckets all together and put in one place, and then it was sorted. We saw nothing we could recognize in the fields. We expected to see chairs and file cabinets and uh, what was left of offices. Uh, everything was reduced to the finest state. It basically looked like mountains of dirt. There were hills of gray dirt, vast expanses of wire, twisted rebar, fields of steel, and uh, the fields of vehicles. Probably the thing I remember the most at Fresh Kills was the, the FBI uh, evidence shed. Um, this is where they would bring the buckets of material that they would sort and find human remains or personal property. So we'd go in this little shed. Uh, that had no air ventilation, so it smelled terrible. It smelled like death, and there would be a bucket of human remains and a bucket of personal property, and then a bucket of other um, objects that maybe they hadn't identified yet. In the open fields, you'd see the white suits slowly with their heads down, picking through um, the rubble or the wire or the, just the, the, the mass of material there, uh, looking for human remains. The main objective was to find DNA. That was the main mission of this whole operation of sorting through 1.8 million tons were to find the smallest piece of a human to identify uh, for a family. That was the main point. And so we would see 
these agents and detectives in these sorting sheds working on conveyor belts where the material would come off the fields and they would sort it and then they would pick through this and these they were really loud sheds they called them sheds they were open tents and there would be six or eight uh, agents lined up along these conveyor belts with this this ear numbing sound of uh, of the machinery going and these these uh, men and women would pick brown pieces off the conveyor belt it was all one color it was all like this brown gray dirt but they would see the shape of a bone or a human remain or something that recognized uh, that was recognizable and they would set it aside and put it in these big white buckets uh, and it would go on in the beginning for 24 hours a day the personal property the personal object uh, was all washed and cataloged very carefully as evidence and uh, They've made a great effort to return these to owners. Many of these were from people who evacuated, but many of them were from uh, people who died. The credit cards were very important because they didn't find uh, remains of roughly half the people. So some people just got a credit card um, and were very appreciative. They would come up, families would come up and tour around, and they would give them these sorts of things. So you'd see. I remember seeing a frequent flyer card with a young woman's name on it, and she had died, and that was a big deal. Um, uh, so th those are the sort of things that s stand out the most. We went into one area, which was the Building 6 sorting area, which is where U.S. Customs and Secret Service and, and um, some of the more sensitive areas were. Well, they found a lot of human remains from the towers, but there was also um, a lot of law, law enforcement guns and vests and rifles and those sort of things, and they would sort of lay that all out on the field. Then the next time we were there, it was all gone. <laughs>